Thank you. Hi. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Kenneth. I'm from the Software System Practice. Um, to this session, um, we will be going through uh, various uh, things that can be done on a Raspberry Pi Pico. So we will be discussing what are the features of the hardware itself. How can we actually use CircuitPython or MicroPython on the Raspberry Pi Pico? Any any feedbacks or any questions you you after this session you may actually you, you can actually drop me an email. My email is on the slides and. Um, let's dive in into the agenda for today's session. First, we will actually go through what is a Raspberry Pi Pico. And we will compare this microcontroller to the, um, the, the king of microcontrollers, which is the ESP32. And what are the various similar RP240 microchipset uh, that was actually uh, designed by other uh, electronic uh, manufacturers. So, and we will actually go um, try to go take, um, understand what is Michael, <clears throat> what is Circuit Python, who developed Circuit Python, and we will write a very simple program or we will go through a simple a hello world program uh, using Circuit Python, and we will also discuss a bit about the um, new feature as in not very new because in fact, ESP32 has already multi-core. So we will actually go, go through a bit of how, a, how actually you can use multi-core in Raspberry Pi P, Pi uh, Pico. And the most, uh, the hottest topic on, on the internet now is basically the programmable IO. We will basically go, uh, uh, talk, uh, uh, we will basically discuss a bit more of the programmable I.O. And lastly, I have my own tinkering project that I actually uses Raspberry Pi Pico to build a actually a custom macro keypad. And also, lastly, um, I actually create a software that integrates with the keypad that can be, in fact, uh, synced to the cloud. So what is a Raspberry Pi Pico? In fact, Raspberry Pi Pico is actually designed in UK. It's actually an RP240. They, they, uh, they, they spend a lot of R&D uh, cash or money to basically um, design a ground up um, microcontroller, not to compete with ESP32, and also slightly better than the Arduino Uno. <clears throat> So Raspberry Pi Pico consists of dual-core ARM Cortex M0 processor, and it clocks in 133 megahertz with an onboard flash memory of 2 MB and, and 264 KB of SRAM. And the, it's a castellated module where the soldering can be directly done on the carrier board. And, uh, and uh, the, you, you require a USB connection, a 1.1 host device support of USB connection. The very important thing is it's actually a very low power microcontroller. So basically ESP32 has deep sleep and all this. Um, this guy use the power consumption is pretty low. And it allows you to basically drag your codes into the microcontroller um, which is act like a thumb drive, right? And he has 25 multi-function GPIOs, which is um, crazy. Yeah, you can have PWM, you can have ADC, uh, ADC you can have, uh, uh, you can have uh, w, UART, and then all, the, uh, and et cetera, et cetera. So you have, you have two times of SPI, two times of I2 squared, uh, two times of uh, UART. So, um, I kind of like the UART because some of microcontrollers doesn't have two UART. We will talk about that later on when we actually discuss on PIO. 
So then um, there's three times of 12 bit of analog to uh, digital converter conversion and 16 con uh, controllable uh, pulse with modulation channels. That, that's pretty, pretty crazy, pretty awesome for motor control or actuators control. And he has a built-in clock timer, which Arduino Uno doesn't have. So most of the time when I, when I build things on Arduino Uno, I have to actually purchase a, a separate breakout board for the clock itself. And it has a built-in temperature sensors and the micro Python and circuit Python library, uh, the programming language that is uh, flashed into the Pico has actually accelerate floating point libraries. And lastly, that's what the hypes are talking about is the eight PIOs it has within the Pico. We will discuss further on the PIO. It's something that um, most of the tinkerers and uh, ho uh, hobbies, uh, electronic guys love about this. So let's compare Pico with ESP32. Um, this comparison doesn't mean that uh, ESP is a lot more superior than Pico. Uh, what I'm trying to tell you that is side-by-side -side comparison so that you guys are aware that um, what are you purchasing or is it sufficient enough for your project, um, um, school project, um, uh, um, some little tinkering project that you're working on. So in terms of core, core counts, um, basically both are, both are the same. The controllers that is using uh, uh, on either one of them, they are different. One is the RP240 and the other one is LX6. The clock speed definitely ESP2 uh, has a higher clock speed. Okay. And uh, the SRAM, um, ESP32 uh, is ahead of it. And it has larger internal flash memory for ESP32 where Pico has only 2 MB. And external, um, ESP32 doesn't have an external flash support. So that means that you will not have a thumb drive-like uh, storage on ESP32 where Pico have. And subsequently, most of the SPI, I do see PWM, ADCs, and GPIOs, uh, the winner will be on the ESP32 side. But I think to me, um, the Raspberry Pico is very, very good for a beginner who wants to basically learn uh, IoT electronics and you know tinker around. Okay, okay. so another comparison uh, chart, uh, comparison metrics for the uh, between Pico and ASP32 is the um, they have a UART of two. Um, RTC memory of uh, not specified, where I think uh, ESP32 win on this. Both of them runs on the uh, voltage of 3.23. And um, uh, in fact, what I like about Pico is it supports circuit Python and micro Python, and also C++. So ESP32 very focused on C and very limited support on the micro Python. And the operating voltage, uh, basically three volt, as I said, then both of them has uh, built-in temperature sensors. There's no touch sensors on the Pico where there is a touch sensors on ESP32. Um, Connectivity-wise, connectivity uh, Pico is very far behind. Luckily, the consideration not to put in Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, and ethernet support is because of the cost. They want to bring down the cost. Um, and both microcontrollers actually support um, micro SD card or some sort of uh, solid disk card, yeah, MMC slots. So then uh, the chip itself is actually $1 in Pico. Um, for ESP32, it's $4. So if you are buying a board, a microcontroller board or a microcontroller breakout board for Pico is actually around four US dollars. In Sing dollar, it's around seven. Okay. Okay, what are the various RP2040 chipset that is already available that you can order online? Uh, I have basically uh, curated a few uh, of them. There's from SparkFunds, they have a few version. They have the Plus and they have the Micro, they have the Micro Mode. So it's like, it's like, your, it's like your GPU cards where you slot in you know, to a bigger 
controller. There's uh, Pyromni, Tini, a little, little uh, uh, 2040, and other fruit. Other fruits, the feather RP2040. Um, so the differences that I actually observe in between all these uh, other uh, variants of uh, microcontrollers is actually some have LiPo, some don't have LiPo, some has the uh, reset button, some doesn't have reset button, and very importantly, the connectivity, which is Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. So um, Adafruit also has a very teeny little uh, RP2040. Um, unfortunately, um, unfortunately, they can actually uh, uh, actually squeeze in the reset button. Uh, majority, all these microcontrollers has a reset button, which the original Raspberry Pi Pico do not have a reset button. So then uh, Arduino also have his own Pico. So Arduino Nano RP2040 Connect. Uh, basically, Arduino is competing with other fruit feather. So both of them has connectivity. Okay. So what is CircuitPython? So CircuitPython is an open source derivative of a MicroPython programming language. So it's targeted for education and beginners who learn to actually develop things on electronic uh, the, uh, microcontroller boards, right? So then the development of CircuitPython is actually supported by the other food industries and why, why, is it, uh, why is it so famous and why people use CircuitPython? It's basically, it's very easy to use, it's straightforward, it's suitable for those who want to learn electronics and uh, uh, start off with programming. And for me, it's actually quite easy to update the source code to the microcontroller where Arduino, you need to select the port, you need to select the correct microcontrollers then um, and you make sure you have to make sure the, the, the C libraries are compatible with the microcontroller. So all these are basically um, you do not ha have to face all these uh, technical uh, uh, roadblocks or you know in between. So you just got to code your Python codes and then drop it into the uh, microcontrollers that support uh, that which is a circuit circuit Python or micro Python base. Then there's a REPL console where interactively you can type in uh, Python codes and you can store things on the uh, microcontrollers that is, which is the Pico. That's a file storage. Like I said, remember just now I did a comparison. There's actually a few, M, a few MB of storage inside. And there is actually a strong community support and strong hardware support. And lastly, um, the easiest language to learn on earth is actually Python. So, so what's the difference between CircuitPython and MicroPython? There's a bit of difference here where only a certain microcontrollers are supported on the one, one of the other side. Yeah. So how do you actually flash your Pico with CircuitPython? You have to actually navigate to this uh, URL here and download the UF2 firmware. And it's actually in a binary format. In order to basically flash it, you have to unplug your USB cable off the Pico and press and hold the boot select button on the board, on the micro on the on the Pico itself. And subsequently plug in the USB cable. And it will basically uh, turn into another mode whereby uh, you will ask to basically drop your firmware into the drive. So there's actually a uh, um, there's two, two modes that actually provide in the, uh, on the Pico itself. One is programmers who want to write their codes and get things working on the Pico. The other one is a, 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 virtual, a virtual storage drive that actually allows you to flash the Pico. So then subsequently, once you have flashed the Pico, in order to reset on the Raspberry Pi Pico, uh, which was actually frustrating for everyone, is you have to unplug and plug the USB cable. So therefore, a lot of the other guys who develop their own Pico, they actually, um, in fact, design, uh, in, they incorporate the de design of having the reset button there. So yeah, like I said, if you're designing a new breakout board for Pico or you are designing uh, an entire Pico board, you might want to consider adding a reset button. It's, it's quite easy 
are to design the reset button, you basically just two cables, one to the run pin and the other one to the ground, ground pin. Okay. So your, your first program in my uh, circuit Python uh, will be this. This is your first Hello World program. What it does is it uh, basically pin out to pin 15 and subsequently toggle the IE, uh, LED. So this is an external LED, but there in micro uh, in Raspberry Pi Pico, there's an internal LED that is on the pin 25. Okay. 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 Um, so let's start uh, our our hello world program in uh, on the Raspberry Pi Pico. Um, we're gonna write a very simple uh, blink program, and um, I'm using an IDA called Tony and it um, integrates pretty well with the microcontroller board uh, for the Raspberry Pi Pico. Yeah, so um, um, well, I'm, I'm using the actual uh, custom keypad that uh, was built by me, and I didn't want to basically detach the con microcontroller from the, the custom keypad there. So, but okay, for further ado, let's uh, proceed. Um, first, I'm going to import uh, basically a machine module, uh, which is actually part of the circuit Python or micro Python. Yeah? So then uh, uh, a U-time module for delaying uh, the processing. Yeah, so or, or they, they could call it sleep or delay you know, in Arduino and things like that. So then um, um, I'm going to declare a variable called a, a internal, uh, basically a internal, um, LED, uh, that will be actually uh, sort of assigned to a pin 25, right? So um, then the pinout for the pin 25 will be, uh, will be declared, right? And I'm going to create a while loop in Python, uh, actually micro Python. And then I'm going to use the pin that was declared above and auto. And I have to delay a, a while so that you can actually see the LEDs uh, being blinked. Yeah, so I'm going to delay uh, three seconds. And um, in order to load this program into the MicroPython, I need to restart the uh, the micro um, the Pico controller, micro, uh, the Pico Raspberry Pi Pico. So I'm going to click on this um, stop. We start backend, so then you will basically see a REPL. So, uh, um, yeah, a, a command, uh, REPL command command line where you can actually, in fact, type Python codes here and execute the line by line commands. So then, um, I'm gonna sync the this into the microcontroller. Uh, in fact, uh, you can basically click save, or you can, um. Normally, I basically click save, and when upon clicking save, um, it basically uh, save a copy of the Python script into the micro Python microcontroller, which is the Pico, right? So then, subsequently, if you uh, sort of want to basically execute the script, uh, you you can um, reset the microcontroller, or you can basically right click on this run uh, F three or run, uh, yeah. So when you run this and you can take a look that the LED is already blinking. Yep, there's a green LED is, is already blinking here, right? So that's the hello world for the circuit Python programs that is being loaded into the Raspberry Pi Pico. Okay. So then as you know that my Raspberry Pi Pico supports, uh, is actually multi, a, a multi-core uh, microcontroller. Um, why is it so? Most of the time, when it's not a multi-core, uh, multi-core micro microcontroller, there is a lot of uh, you can't do a lot of concurrent task execution. So, for example, one core handles an uh, interface or a communication, while the other core actually handles acquisition of sensor sensory data. So, where when there is actually a a, a dual core in Pico. There's one, you can actually basically pass data from one call to the other call or even delegate the task for, uh, for to, to a respective call itself. 
So I'm very excited and I'll be showing you a video demo on um, how to write a multi-core code in MicroPython um, in later on at, at the end of the, of the, of the presentation. So then, uh, but I have snippet codes that is attached to these slides, which I might not want to basically thoroughly go through, but briefly go through with you what I did on this uh, to simulate the multi-core is there's two core, right? So imagine that the first core actually uh, read uh, sensor data that is pressure, altitude, and temperature. Subsequently, once it reads the sensor, sensor, sensor data, um, uh, that is on the second call, it will pass back to the first call and it will, the first call will manipulate or it will add up the pressure, the altitude or minus of the temperature and things like that. And the values will pass on here and there and it is actually a loop. So there's two calls working together. One, one call is reading the values, the other call basically manipulating the values. Okay. So therefore, in on the serial console, you, you basically can, can tell that there's when the one call active at one of the time, it actually has the is doing the, the other stuff. So so in, in a way that uh, you can't run concurrently, but in a but you know you you basically uh, have to release the lock so that one runs after the other, but it's still faster than uh, it's still it's still faster than the traditional uh, no call. Uh, microcontrollers. Okay, the uh, the next thing is actually, in fact, we're going to write a, a multi-core Python program. So as we actually gone through the slides, and multi-core means that there's actually do call in the micro uh, uh, Raspberry Pi Pico microcontrollers. Uh, what I'm going to demonstrate or simulate here is basically the first call will basically acquire the lock, and subsequently they will um, gather or uh, get sensor data or virtual sensor data and assign it into the memory or the um, or assign it to a variable on the program itself and subsequently the second call will take over and manipulate the the sensor data and uh, and release the log back to the first call and and the whole program will basically basically go into a loop and back and forth back and forth and back and forth Right. So then, uh, the first thing that we need to do here is we will import the uh, from a module uh, our machine and the class of yeah the object called pin, and uh, we need to import thread as well. Um, and lastly, uh, the U time. Yeah. Uh, okay. So then we have to declare two variables, uh, a virtual variables, uh, we basically can call a call it as a global virtual variables, right? Yeah, so um, the first virtual variable will be pressure. So if some of you have some of you have uh, done IoT before, there's actually breakup board that does the uh, uh, temperature, humidity, and pressure that captures in one single chip, right? I think I think belief is actually BME280. So then um, I will capture the um, altitude, right? So um, that, uh, that's zero. And lastly, the temperature. Okay. And then um, we have to first, first, first of all, uh, uh, synchronize the call. Yeah. And uh, uh, the synchronize the lock of the call. Okay. Um, basically, micro. Python has the uh, API of allocating the lock uh, on the call itself, uh, where we can declare a call locked, then underscore thread, then there's a function called allocate. Okay. So we allocate the lock, then uh, the next thing what we're going to do here is basically define a function. So when we define a function, we would like to have a, a function or definition that is to basically pick the values that was actually passed from the call one to, uh, yeah, from the call one to, to basically manipulate the value. So I'm going to declare a definition, second, call it second call. Yeah. 
So then uh, I, I need to basically write to the variables that is outside of the program, right? So basically I need to use a keyword glo go global. And then uh, the same thing for the uh, altitude. So the, okay. So then I'm gonna run with a while, okay? And the first thing I'm gonna do is I, from the call lock, I will acquire the call lock, yeah? And then uh, sleep worker for two milliseconds, okay? And um, uh, while I, okay, so while sleeping then uh, I, I basically would like to uh, sort of a, Okay, okay. So uh, sleep for two millisecond and then print. Let's try to print things here. Uh, call to show sensor data. Then, um, in fact, I'm going to print um, the the pressure. The pressure and altitude and the temperature. Yeah, so uh, pressure. Okay, then, then the and So then um, once I acquire the data was actually uh, passed from the call one and uh, being printed out on the call two, I will eventually release the lock. But then before that, let me slip for another two milliseconds. And before that, and then uh, lastly, I will just release it back to the call one. Okay. Okay. So then, um, well, uh, we have to basically start this function. So uh, we need to actually pass on this function to the thread in the MicroPython uh, programming uh, runtime, yeah? So then uh, I will be using the underscore thread. And uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna call a function called start, okay, start, uh, start new thread and then pass in the function that was actually declared by us uh, or the definition. Okay, uh, pass in this. Okay, pass in this. And then the second argument, uh, we will not be passing anything. Then we will just pass in an empty tuple. Okay. Um, then we will have a while true. Okay. A while true, uh, the same thing. The first thing I need to do is I will use the call lock to acquire the call lock for the call one, right? So then uh, I'm going to print here call one, uh, call one uh, active. Right? Okay. So then um, uh, the call one will be acquired. And subsequently, what I'm going to do here is I will sort of sleep for two milliseconds. And I'm going to manipulate. Uh, I'm going to simulate a manipulate. So I'm going to print something here called a simulate. Okay. So then uh, I'm going to plus or minus the uh, uh, virtual sensor data. So basically, uh, pressure, I'm going to do the plus. I'm going to plus 20 to it. Altitude, I'm going to plus uh, minus or plus minus 10, then uh, temperature, I'm going to plus five, right? So, okay. So then uh, this is where I actually update the, um, the updating global variables. So that's how I update the global variables. Then I'm going to sleep for another two minutes again. Then uh, lastly, what I'm gonna do is I will sort of uh, release the lock. Okay. Okay, so I'm gonna release the lock here. Yeah. Okay. 
So then, uh, let's save. Okay. Once, uh, let's take a look. Uh, it it on the on the microcontroller you won't see any anything happens because the call uh, is basically internally the uh, the the execution is actually done on the call uh, on the on the on the RP two zero four zero call uh, the do do call processor. So. Yeah. So, but then we have a, a serial probing into the debug statement so that you can actually tell that what is happening uh, inside the microcontroller. So I'm going to run. Uh, let's let's restart the backend first to make sure that uh, it is actually a clean state and then uh, there's no running program in on the on the on the Pico. So then I'm going to run. Okay. Um, can't import pin. Oh. Import. Oh, sorry. Uh, from machine import pin. Ah, my bad. Um, it's actually a little case. So let's save and then run. Okay. Okay. So, uh, basically, the first call is activated, and then it simulates the. The, um, the virtual sensor data and then sub subsequently uh, yeah so the second call take over right then it passed back to the first call and and then the first call try to act, try to uh, increase or manipulate the, the the stuff again and the second call will receive the data so basically this is pretty cool because uh, most of the time there will be a acquiring of data from sensors and subsequently there is certain processing needs to be done on the second call that will speed up a lot of things in the microcontroller world. Thank you very much. Okay, so what is PIO? So PIO in Raspberry Pi Pico, it stands for Programmable IO. So the standard hardware protocols that can be used on a, most of the microcontrollers of Pi Pico will be SPI, I2C, you know, um, and all this kind of stuff. What if you have your own connectors and protocol and you want to go very low level? So that's where the PIO comes in. So PIO allows you to create additional hardware interface or even new type of interface that is not I2C or SPI. Um, where you can basically uh, interact with it, with it, with the code, and uh, communicate with it with your serial device. And, and you do not want to basically stick to a standard, which is SBI or I2C. You might want to create your own uh, protocol or connectors that can be used on the Raspberry Pi Pico. So for example, you have a DVI or you have a Nintendo, uh, controllers that you want to interface with Pico, that's where it's not SPI or it's not I2C, it, you can actually use a PIO, a programmable IO. Okay. So why did I actually create or uh, make a Pico custom macro keypad? So like our friend, friend Jackie Chan here, he scratched his head, oh no, during the pandemic, I, I have to actually use a lot of application. What are the application that I have to use so uh, have to use across during the pandemic is all the meeting software, right? The blue jeans, Zoom. I have to record my own session, uh, 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 you know, learning session. Uh, Microsoft Teams. Uh, some banks actually use WebEx and blue jeans, and then some startup uses Stack, uh, Slack, and Google Meet. So there's so many types of conference uh, meeting software that I have to jump into it. What I've one of the difficulties that I'm facing is to memorize or to remember all the shortcut keys. And I was overwhelmed with all the shortcut keys. I don't know how to mute. I don't know how to enable the webcam. I do not know how to do this and that, you know. So then once I get the hang of it, of all the software, and the, the things that in order to memorize all the shortcut keys is kind of crazy, but I'm a programmer myself. So we, are, we actually used to Visual Studio Code, Vim, uh, Emacs, and all this. So we are actually uh, shortcut junkies in a way. So, but then for end user, for them to hop into multiple software and remembering all the shortcut keys, that is really going to 
skill them, and uh, there's a lot of learning curve. So is there a way to improve productivity where I can create a macro keypad that can bind to all the shortcut keys for various applications, right? So I went online and Google and looked for a hardware, and I found that there's an Elgato Stream Deck. Oh, wow, this is cool. Every button can be bind to application or application shortcuts, and then when you press on it, then it will, you know, you will execute or act on it. But it's costly. It's actually $150 and to $400 plus. And I find that it's, it's very costly and pricey. So therefore, I was thinking, can I build my own? Is it possible to build my own? Okay, that's where I actually use Pico to actually build my first prototype. So my first prototype, actually, in fact, I use the Pico's uh, LEDs. This is a built-in LEDs. Every time a button is being pressed, the LED will blink, right? So then I wire up uh, a tactile buttons of 13 into the to the uh, to the brick uh, to the to the board, and I solder it myself. So so the first prototype is always I do not design in on an eagle or uh, fit things or whatever. So I basically solder it and uh, hook it up into the Pico, right? So that, that's how it how it looks like with 13 buttons and uh, subsequently on the on the behind, it's all manually soldered. Yeah. Okay. Or uh, manually wired. So yeah, so it's it's very painful. I have to use multimeter, multimeter to find out the shots and stuff like that. Okay. And lastly, um there is actually an example code in Adafruit whereby you can turn a Pico into a HID device. Means it's either a keyboard or a mouse. And that program, you actually have to load it into the Raspberry Pi Pico uh, microcontroller. And once you plug your USB cable uh, into this connector, and it turns the microcontroller into a keyboard or HID device. Okay. So then, therefore, um, I can basically use a, a desktop software to capture certain um, shortcut keys and then um, generate the, 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 the binds, the binding, and send it into the controllers. Later on, when there's a video that you, you'll be watching that, uh, in fact, um, they will show you how actually the end-to-end -end works. Okay. So then I, I'm quite satisfied with this, uh, this prototype and I want to actually push further. Uh, of my of my this um, uh, macro keypad, so I have a version two. So the version two uses sixteen built-in addressable RGB LEDs. So it is no longer color coded on the buttons. So every uh, cherry uh, key, um, they actually uh, has the LED at the back that is light up. So now it's from 13, I actually increase it to 16. And the, the same circuit Python program that is used on the previous version will be also used on this version. And 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 I I and we and design a PCB that is on ground up and sent to uh JCL PCB or Chessen or Chessen to the China PCB manufacturers to print out the PCB for me. And subsequently, um you have to manually um, plug in your the cherry keys, and there, therefore I will design a, a box an enclosure that to make it nicely. Okay, this is still under development. Uh, yet not fully tested on the software, the desktop software that I developed using Flutter. So I will be showing you um, a demo later on. Okay. So a micro keypad configuration software that is written in Flutter, which is a desktop software. Um, as you know that Google is pushing for Flutter. Uh, you can develop, uh, you, can using, you can use Flutter to develop mobile, uh, web, and desktop. So one code base, rule them all. And both of the micro keypads, you, uh, the version one and version two is actually integrated with this desktop software. And all the configuration, um, all the configuration that is being configured on this desktop software is actually able to sync to the cloud. And once you have configured all these buttons here, so um, it, this is a bit small. What, 
what I'm uh, basically there's a demo video that I'm going to present to you so that at least it's clearer. So what this screenshot does is basically every button is bind to a shortcut keys. A button can be bind to a shortcut keys. A button can be bind to a text message. So whenever you, when you press when you press any of the buttons on the hardware, it will pick up the actual execution or the behavior that is being by, uh, being configured on onto the device itself. Okay. So this is this is thirteen keys and this is a 16, 16 uh buttons, uh keypad. All right, hi guys. This is a demo of the uh, macro keypad along along with the uh, customized software or the configuration software that is actually developed using uh, Google Flutter. Okay, um, so there is actually a drop, drop down that you are able to select two types of keypad. One is the, the custom one that is built uh, as a prototype and subsequently there is a, a version 2 that is called Keybow, Key, Keybow and, and uh, if, if, if you select um, the other keypad, it looks like this. So it, it actually has an enclosure, then there's mechanical cherry key, uh, keyboard, uh, key, key caps that is uh, 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 being pushed into the uh, newly, newly created PCBs. Okay, so uh, let's focus on um, the configuration. What this configuration does is eventually um, the 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 values of the configuration will be captured on this application. Subsequently, it will basically generate a Python script or a circuit Python script that will be synced into the microcontroller, which is the Raspberry Pi Pico, right? So then um, the the second the second drill down below here is basically the application profile. Um, uh, for this demonstration, we will be focusing on Zoom, the Zoom application. So uh, I'll be selecting Zoom, and and therefore is actually mainly for the custom Pico keypad. And um, in this keypad, there's only thirteen buttons, but the the other one, which is uh, the version two, has sixteen buttons, right? So then. Um, while basically what we're going to do here is there's 13 buttons you have to basically assign the 13, 13 buttons with all the shortcut keys along with it um, so what i'm going to do here is um, basically i will start to assign all the shortcut keys um, there's a drop down here um, you can basically select sh shortcut keys and text so um, if you want to actually micro micro rise or actually in fact uh, you do not want to type when you're having a zoom session for for example uh, you have to greet your student uh, every time it, uh, the, uh, the the course start in the morning and then you have to actually uh, say goodbye to the student after when the course end and all this and there's a lunch break uh, tea break and stuff like that you can basically macro your text so you say hey hi student good morning everyone uh, how are you guys doing and things like that or you could uh, guys can you go for a tea break of 15 minutes and come back later yeah so you can actually micro rice uh, macro or uh, macro rice the text that uh, which is buying on the buttons of of the of the uh, 2d to the macro keypad itself right so then uh, the first button what I'm going to do is I'll stay with F1 and second button I, I'll quickly do this um, so that um, so so that you guys will need to basically I don't need to basically go through every single uh, binding itself uh, but uh, I will just I will not uh, I'll skip a few so that uh, local um, recording um, show height this is quite important because um, this these two functionality I actually use a lot when you open up the chat panels and then there's participant panels and stuff like that then um, I will do an end meeting right and lastly the button 13 I will use a text I say I'll type bye bye okay bye bye everyone right so then um, right after you have configured all this uh, you uh, there's a floating action button on the lower lower right on my side uh, a speed dial um, what you have to do is you click on it and select uh, a Python code right 
Um, you guys won't be seeing the dialog box that is popped up on the screen, but uh, what I'm what I'm basically doing here is I'm going to the um, the Circuit Python um, microcontroller is actually a a drive, um, and what I'm going to do before that is I will need to connect the microcontroller to the computer. So that it turns it, uh, so it will detect it as a thumb drive, sort of a thumb drive. So right after you have um, um, actually uh, done with the configuration, you can actually send the Python script to uh, to the to the Pico uh, microcontroller, right? Okay, so right. So therefore, there's a dialog that is pop up after you click select to code. Uh, all you have to do is um, select the circuit Python drive, uh, which is G, and click on code. Double click on code. So when you click on code, then uh, my configuration program will basically store this value in one of the variables. So that therefore, when I um, start to sync the configuration, that is actually a Python script to the microcontroller. Uh, they they know where is the uh, where to store where to store the, uh, the, the 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 drive. I mean the location of the drive. Yeah. So then um, I will double click this right and uh, and. The, the the last step, what you have to, you can do is basically you have to sync it to the Pico uh, drive, right? So click on the second dial, uh, speed dial, um, then um, yeah, just click on this. Um, there, there's no there's no dialog, uh, there's no uh, yeah, there, there, there's no confirmation box or things like that because this is just a just a, a quick configuration software that is developed to basically do that. So then um, right after that, once you have sync. Um, as you know that the original Pico board is actually a four uh, a four dollar board and the chip is actually one dollar, right? So therefore, there's no there's there isn't any reset button on the board. So therefore, in order to reset um uh the the Pico, uh you have to basically unplug the USB cable. So what I'm going to do here is um I will unplug the USB cable and then uh plug it back in. Okay. Okay. So once you plug it back in, your Windows notification will show that there's a new drive. I know they will basically detect a new drive and stuff like that. Then the code is still there, right? So then, okay, let's 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 start try out uh, Zoom. So I'm gonna switch um, my application to Zoom. So I'm gonna minimize. The, uh, sorry, I'm gonna minimize this, and I'm gonna bring up uh, the Zoom uh, application. Uh, yeah. Right. Okay, so let's press button four. So button four is one, two, three, four. So this is button four, right? So uh so is when I press button four, uh, the the mic will actually mute and unmute, right? So, uh, button four, so yeah, so un unmute again. You press it again, right? So then um, there will be other buttons. So this is uh, right. So then uh, they okay. So uh, button. Um, yeah, okay, let's bring up the chat panels, which is button 10, right? So, um, let's see, button 10. So, this is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So, this is button 10, okay? Bring up the chat panel. So, um, yeah, you can tell from on the side there, uh, the chat panel is up, right? So, uh, let's minimize that, okay? So, the chat panel is up, right? So, then that is a special uh, button that actually type the text in right that will be the the last button so um, that will be the last button um, button 13 so yeah so basically bye hi everyone right 
So basically, that's how it works. Um, where you can actually buy a lot of shortcut keys into uh to your macro macro keypad and stuff like that. So thank you. Right. So the last part of this uh demo will be um, I'm going to show you how the configuration of uh, all the key binds um uh, towards the buttons will be saved to the cloud. And um, while this this um. Desktop, app desktop application, which is written in Flutter, will actually call a, um, a cloud serverless function where the, they, they, will, they will perform a post. And the post will basically insert uh, the configuration uh, as a record on the, on the real-time database in, in, on Google Fire, Firebase, right? So um, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to select Zoom and let's Let's do this. Um, basically, um, click on multiple selection of um, assignment to the key, shortcut keys. Okay. And try out uh, text. Yep. Hi there. Yep. And then click on the speed dial and then save to cloud. Right. So, once the record reaches the Firebase database, it will basically look like this. Yep. Hi there, is there. Then the others are all bind to the key codes. Right, thank you. So uh, along the way, um, I before I actually started off this project, I did a lot, I actually went through a lot of research and I, I do a lot of read up. So uh, there's a reference link that is on this on my presentation. Uh, if those of you who are interested uh, on this project, you might want to go to my GitHub link. Uh, that's where I store my Python codes and Flutter codes. Um, um, but I I did not uh, I I did not. Uh, commit my PCB design. Um, likely when I'm done and tested well with it, then I will basically commit my PCB design. So you can read down the data sheets. You can basically uh, take a look at the SDK that is being supported by the Pico and read, read up on the CircuitPython documentation and some of the some of the some of the other guys uh, project that I actually uh, ref, I actually went and read up uh, 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 and to make sure that I'm, 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 I'm I understand or familiar with the Raspberry Pi uh, concept and stuff like that. And those of you who wants to teach your kids to to learn Python with the microcontrollers or electronics, you can actually download a free ebook from uh, Raspberry Pi themselves. Uh, Raspberry Pi from the Raspberry Pi website. So they actually um, you can actually buy a twenty dollars uh, book that is selling on by the some of the electronic renders, or you can actually download the book and basically load it into your, your iPad or whatsoever, um, you know, notebook to read. So then um, you can actually learn certain things from Adafruit. Adafruit uh, guys also created a mechanical Pico keyboard, um, like what I did. And if you want, you're interested to buy the Pico, you can go to Citron. And Citron has actually a breakout board that is designed by the, 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 the engineers over there. The Maker, Maker PI Pico, quite cool. There's growth connectors, there's built-in buttons, LEDs, and etc. You can have SD card slot. So it's basically a uh, um, all-star all -star breakout board that, that basically you use, use, use uh, Raspberry Pico. Right. Then there is a GitHub uh, curated uh, links that I I actually uh, normally visit. So so those are those those other other people's projects and libraries are all residing on this link here. Okay. So thank you, thank you very much. Thank you uh, for attending my uh, presentation. Yeah, hi everyone. Uh, if you have any questions on my session, please uh raise uh yeah raise it on the chat. Thanks.
Um, no, um, there, there isn't any uh, appliance that is using uh, Raspberry, Raspberry Pi Pico. So um, I, I guess um, Raspberry Pi Pico was actually created for uh, prototyping and education purposes. So, um, but uh, I, hope, I hope that uh, in the future, the chipset will be used and also will be as popular as uh, uh, expressive uh, ESP32. Because the ESP32 actually use a lot in uh, home, uh, smart home and home automation devices. So like like uh like those relay relay that you plug in into your uh traditional uh electro electrical appliances to on off a light or you know to off a, a, a fan or whatsoever by what's uh sonar or this kind of stuff tas tasmota and this so um uh, the the board itself will not be used on the commercial uh product but the chipset itself uh will likely be a very um uh, it will compete with uh, Arduino and ESP thirty two. In, in, in terms of implementing in a commercial world because um, the, the, the thing that I like about the PIO is actually uh, if you uh, some of you guys actually play RC cars you can actually uh, in fact uh, interface with a lot of uh, other protocols and connectors which uh, which the other co microcontrollers do not have this feature so the other co uh, other microcontrollers focus on SPI uh, I2Cs you know but this guy you can basically you know have your own uh, custom interface and also uh Interface with a lot of connectors that is already available in the uh, that that is that, that is not part of the standard, but you you want to actually integrate or interface with it, right? I hope that the chipset will will take place in an IoT or a smart home, yeah. Oh, I, I, I come across uh, PSA, they have hackathons and uh, some prototyping, uh, uh, they do, they do uh, use Raspberry Pi, you know. I, I mean, I, I guess some of you, if you guys are from GovTech, I think your, your thermal cameras, your prototype also using Raspberry Pi, right? Initially. Yeah. So... Is hackable as in yeah I think I think most of the microcontrollers today um is definitely hackable yeah if if let's say there's there's not enough uh secure con coding and uh infrastructure related co in consideration so so basically writing good codes on the microcontroller doesn't help very much it's actually uh, a combination of everything uh it, it how uh, how do you encrypt your data when you send to cloud and then uh how do you basically uh, send back your data to the device and stuff like that? Can people get into the microcontrollers and then tinker around and then at the end, uh, they can enable uh, the serial connection and then your TRX is exposed and they can, uh, they, can, they can basically flash or create another firmware that can, can basically uh, sort of side-by-side uh, -side exist. So, so all this kind of stuff um, is not just about the microcontrollers. Like. It's, it's everything as a whole. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Come, um, yeah, should, 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 uh, should, uh, tinker around. We have chance that actually we can have a, a meetup group when, after the pandemic, <laughs> I think most of us are staying at home. Yeah. So we can have a Raspberry Pi Pico meetup group. Yeah. We can tinker around with, yeah, Pico. Okay, uh, so uh, thank you very much everyone. Uh, I hope you guys uh, like this session. This session is a bit uh, technical. Um, and, but the, the thing that I, I want to convey to you guys is likely uh, when you actually consider design uh, IoT solution, right? It's, it's not only about the, the, the microcontroller itself or the program itself, it's actually end-to-end. Uh, -end. Yeah, so what, what sort of solution you, you put in place or what sort of cloud solution that you integrate with it. So. Yep. So I hope that uh, yep. I'll I'll see you more uh in ISS if you actually attend our course. Thanks.